Okay, this is May the 11th, uh, 2023. This is tape number five. Uh, last year in April, I recorded four YouTube uh, programs on my art collection. Today is just an update. It's going to be a quick and dirty uh, review. I've come, uh, we have new information on the Lichtenstein and on the altar painting, and I want to cover it as quickly as I can, and hopefully you'll be interested in the results. What I have found on the Lichtenstein, uh, the book, uh, Roy Lichtenstein, 1948, History in the Making, 1960, I, I bought two books uh, and it's a great book of all his early works. Uh, I have two paintings. A painting there is in, in uh, is a self-portrait dated 1956. The painting next to it is an abstract painting that was uh, of the explosion or the atomic blast. And they are both untouched, day-glow paint. They were painted in Cleveland. Uh, they came from Cleveland, and I bought the abstract in 2004, and I bought the self-portrait from uh, Alfred Beta's collection in 2008. I paid $1,200 for the, uh, uh, the portrait there, which I thought was interesting. What is new today, while on YouTube and Google researching art, and it's amazing that tool, it keeps popping up more information. Uh, there was a program that came up on the white brush stroke, and it was a review of the auction of that particular painting done, I think it was done about uh, 1962 or four, I can't remember. But the painting sold for $25 million. And I said, my goodness, I think I that that's an incredible price. But Lichtenstein is doing real well in the market. Uh, his best painting is the uh, Donald Duck and Mickey Mouse uh, painting, and then uh, the other ones. Uh, uh, his brushstroke is a big series, and his paintings have sold. His masterpiece painting, I think, sold is uh, for a hundred something million dollars. But I knew when I saw the brush stroke and the and that price of twenty five million dollars was so shocking to me. I said I've seen that brush stroke somewhere before. So I went to my pad and I I drew out what I remembered and I went upstairs and I went to the gallery and I looked at the the portrait there and I found a a wave right there on his jacket, and I couldn't believe it. It matched the white brush stroke, and I call it the wave. So I studied the uh, painting and uh, and the brush strokes, both on both the portrait and the abstract, and I found where it has nothing but uh, repeated brush strokes in both paintings. What Lichtenstein did, he, he used the visible brushstroke in his paintings to convey a sense of grand gesture. And uh, he made a quote, the, the brushstroke became his very important, uh, it was very, it came very important to his work. And I'm, I'm messing up some of his quotes, but uh, that's, that's what he felt. He was influenced by uh, Picasso and his life, he was always chasing Picasso. And, but it was interesting as a quote in here. I was trying to think if I could find this quote. Roy Lichtenstein was known as the invisible artist. He, there was no, no self portraits, uh, uh, of him other than a, a, uh, different uh, exaggerations, but I think I have the only self-portrait now, and it uh, I bought it from Alfred Beta, 
and uh, he said he had purchased it in Cleveland, Ohio, and the painting came from Cleveland, and and Lichtenstein was there in Cleveland at that time, and it was a time where he had not made it big, and he uh, was trying to find his way, and it's before the uh, the pop art has taken off. What I have here today, I have with the brush strokes and the study of these two paintings, it is my opinion, I have the origin of pop art. And uh, I can share all that with you. I can show you the brush strokes. And uh, I'm gonna stop the, uh, the recording right now. I'm gonna try to, let's see, I'm trying to arrange this and hold the camera at the same time. The, let me see the brush stroke. Let me show you, I wanna show a couple of these. That's the abstract painting. And you can see the brush strokes in there. Uh, and I've had drawings that on there. Then I have the, uh, the, that was a copy of the white brush stroke at the top. Then you had the, uh, this is a masterpiece painting. I think it sold for $165 million, and which that's enough to get your attention there. Uh, I'm gonna show you, and then the, the his most famous painting so far in his career has been the uh, Donald Duck, and there's his initial RFL. And having this new book out on his early works has helped me with all of the signatures, and it's helped me uh, to identify this, and uh, it's helped me. But let's see what else we're going to find here. All right, I'm going to go to the next file. Please put up with the interruption of of the program here. Here is a close-up picture of the brush stroke, and I don't have a good uh, sample of it here, but the brush stroke is, uh, is here. You'll see it here and there. It is the white brush stroke. Uh, that's not the best example where you can see it, but uh, you can, I can outline it on here. But the, his whole jacket is made up with brush strokes, which I thought was real interesting. And let me find a better example to show you. The uh, signature book on uh, Lichtenstein was, uh, I bought it back in 2000 and what was the bait on that? I bought it in 2001. And this is the one where I found his signature. And here it is right there. I think you can see it, and I got better pictures of it. I'll, I'll have to zoom in and give you better pictures of it. But what is interesting today, the brush strokes that uh, has helped me identify the Lichtenstein painting and the, and the brush stroke is on my painting. While I was doing that, I found the uh, monogram on there, RFL, and it is right right there, RFL, and I have some better examples of that to show you too. Um, while I was working on that, on brush strokes, uh, and, and I've got all excited about confirming the brush stroke uh, of uh, Lichtenstein. By the way, there's fingerprints on both of these paintings, I almost forgot, and I did, we did have the fingerprints analyzed uh, I've matched them up where I think they're very, they're very similar. Uh, a, a painting to each painting has been identified with fingerprint, but a professional said it wasn't enough there to uh, identify 100% uh, the uh, the fingerprint of Lichtenstein. So we've requested other sources and original uh, of his fingerprints, and we'll get more of that later. There's another program that we have. I've, I've been in touch with the fingerprint people, but also DNA. Uh, I'm working on a DNA study. It is a possibility that I can take the paint 
fingerprints and take the paint off and do a DNA test and there's a chance I can pull his DNA off of that. So I'm working on that and we're working on a, 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 a DNA positive uh, standard to go by. So there's two projects I'm working on there, but I will keep you posted and let you know if I find that out. What I thought was good about what has helped me so much on uh, Lichtenstein was the brush stroke and how he believed in brush strokes and is so important to his work uh, that I noticed that I was watching, I watched another program on YouTube and it came up with uh, the Mona Lisa and Leonardo da Vinci and uh, the lady who was introducing the program on YouTube made a, a very profound statement. She said, uh, there are no brush strokes on Mona Lisa. And I, it really hit me, and I said, wait a minute. This is very interesting. And after taking that in, I went back upstairs to the gallery, and I went to the uh, altar painting I have upstairs, and I always knew that painting was different, and I couldn't, I didn't understand why. And I didn't understand why I, could, I couldn't paint that painting. But now I realize what it is. My painting has no brush strokes on it. The altar painting on the face of uh, uh, Isabella and of the angel Michael and of Van Dyke in the barred window with the four angels above, there are no fingerprints on the altar painting, which was shocking to me, and it helped me make the connection uh, that Rubin was using the style of uh, Fumata, which has no, uh, shows no edges and uh, is cloudy. That's the, uh, he copied Leonardo while doing that painting, and he never finished. The reason Leonardo never finished a lot of his paintings but it was like uh, 40 layers of paint, and it takes like, uh, uh, I would say, 40 to 50 times uh, the uh, uh, of work to do a painting with that many layers. So I thought that was a real interesting part of the uh, brush stroke, which has helped me with uh, the altar painting. So now we'll get back to uh, Lichtenstein and where we are today. Uh, I think I'm going to try to get some publicity on it. I need to show you, and it's hard for me to do this. Let me, let me stop the camera, and you wouldn't believe all the files I have. But uh, let me stop the camera, and then I'll start it again. But uh, hold on. Now we're back recording again, I hope. Uh, in the book was a uh, – I had never seen this before – but Roy Lichtenstein copied uh, Picasso uh, uh, of, and of doing a uh, Gertrude Stein portrait. And it shows you how much influence uh, Picasso had on him that he would actually copy the portrait. And I was not aware of that until this, this book came out. But uh, that shows you the, uh, how he was, he was running in the shadow of Picasso until... He uh, invented pop art, and he and Andy Warhol pulled that together. But in my opinion, uh, Roy was the first because uh, I got a, got these paintings date back to 1956, and it shows the brush stroke and the uh, how he invented the brush strokes. And I think that helps me identify that uh, that he was number one in pop art and was started. I've got a, a list of uh, study on these different signatures, which I think you can see it there, but you can see how he started his, uh, he uh, was a lot of secretive uh, signatures early on, and then he got into the RFL, and then he's got his regular signature from uh, in signing uh, uh, papers and stuff. All right, here's a here's the one. Here's a close up. <clears throat> here's a close up, and you can see the R V L underneath the point of the shirt where they come together at the bottom. 
I've drawn up, I had a drawing of one, and I'm going to get, show it to you here. This is the same one, but this is highlighted with the RFL, and then it has something underneath there that uh, you can use your imagination on. But the RFL is there, the monogram is there, which uh, is, uh, is another, that is a signature by Roy Lichtenstein on this self portrait which is dated 1956. And here's another a variation of that. There it is there. You can, you can see that there where I, where I enhanced it with a pencil. This is, gives you an idea of the brush strokes on the portrait. I just grew up some examples. The one in the uh, right-hand side of the collar, you see that that is the brush stroke. And, uh, and I, I thought that was, I couldn't believe it. I said, there it is, the brush stroke right there in the middle of his painting, along with his uh, monogram, which uh, I thought was, was interesting. So I'm excited about the find. I, I think uh, we have, uh, everybody has their opinions, of course, but I think I have a winner here. I'm real pleased the way it's turned out. And we will continue working on the uh, fingerprint and the DNA. And that would be conclusive if I could bring that about. So uh, this will be our number five tape. I hope you find it interesting. If you have any questions, please let me know. Uh, one thing was interesting too, all the timing on this, how <clears throat> I found all this new information and now, <clears throat> excuse me, the voice, of all things, they, they're coming out with a new stamp in, uh, to honor Roy Lichtenstein. And what do you see? You see the brush strokes over his photograph. You see a picture of the explosion there. <clears throat> so the explosion is my abstract, and the self-portrait is his picture there with brush strokes, made up of brush strokes. So I hope you find this interesting. I'll keep you posted my progress. Thank you again for uh, interest in the art collection by Richard Hill. Take care.